Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the SMB College Group Virtual Open Evening. Uh, you're watching the Agriculture Live Q&A session this evening. I am Alex. I'm the Marketing Manager here and I'm joined by James this evening. He's our Head of Farm and Grounds. So he's going to talk to you a little bit about the courses um, and please pop your questions in the chat box and we'll get those answered for you. So James, over to you. Hi Alex, um, thanks everybody for joining us this evening. Um, just going to talk to you a little bit about um, what you can expect if you come to Brooksby to study agriculture. Um, it is without a shadow of a doubt um, an up and coming area. It's it's it, it's very, very important that we, we keep investing in, and getting people out into the industry and, and coming and studying such an important and integral um, industry. Um, and unfortunately, we are starting to see the numbers grow, which is really good because um, farming and agriculture needs it. Um, the farm itself at college, we're very, very lucky and fortunate that we've got a, a big, a big estate. We've got over 800 acres um, at our fingertips. And the moral of Brooksby is that all the students get involved with all aspects of our farm estates and our grounds so everything that we do and, and all of the practicals that we do at college are done for a purpose you know it's not a case of sort of creating practical experiences it is actually getting in there and rolling your sleeves up and doing what's needed um, the college consists of um, a pedigree herd of hereford cattle we also have a small herd of pedigree oh, shorthorn yeah. cattle um, the idea is that by having um, pedigree stock, we can potentially, if the students are willing to and wanting to, we can prepare them and show them at local um, agricultural shows. One that we've historically done before COVID was um, Lincolnshire. So it's a nice local one for us and it's a, it's a really great way for the students to do a little bit above and beyond what the sort of curriculum requires and, and to have a little taster of going to these sorts of events. Um, we've also got a flock of North Country mules, um, very, very traditional breed of sheep for the lowland farms in Leicestershire. Um, again, we've, we've used this sort of breed because they're very, very typical of what you would expect to find in a lowland farm in these areas. So we're constantly trying to make the experience at college as real to life as it will be when you progress and go and get a job in industry afterwards. Uh, we've also got over 300 acres of arable land which is contract farmed by our neighbour but we have a very very close relationship with him which means that we can get involved with um, crop walking and we can regularly meet with the uh, uh, agronomist to could sort of show us the crop health but also we have for the level three group in particular, um, a student field, which is completely led by the students and the lecturing team to decide what crop's gonna go into the ground, what, how it's going to get looked after, how it's gonna get um, cultivated and put into the ground. And then um, throughout the year, the academic year, the students will be responsible for making decisions on what needs to happen to that, that crop. Um, it's really, again, it's a really, really good way of just being able to um, experience real life sort of practical experiences. I think um, another important aspect is the estate skills module. So all of our courses running from level one through to level three will all take part in estate skills. It's an essential part of um, running a farm and being an agriculturalist is looking after your estate, fencing, hedge laying, um, all sorts of different practical jobs that, that are required um, in and around the farm and the farm estate. Um, so that in a nutshell is the, is the farm and the resources that we've got. And we also try and make our timetables as interactive with the uh, college farm as, as, as possible. So not trying to sort of say that, um, you know, you, you're out there all the time doing stuff like that because there is obviously a, a need to go inside and do uh, the theoretical stuff, but we, we try and make it as hands on. We realise and we understand that the majority of students coming on to an agricultural course are very hands on and very sort of outdoorsy type of people. Um, 
you know, it's worth reiterating, we can't do the whole course outside as much as we would love to. That's not possible. We do have to make sure that an element is done indoors. Um, but there is always that, that, you know, desire to get students out and rolling their sleeves up as much as possible. That's great. We've had a couple of questions. Great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do I need to have experience working on a farm? Absolutely not, no. So we have a massive range of students that come onto the agricultural courses, some that have got, you know, farming backgrounds and have, have lived and been born on farms and some who have never stepped foot on a farm before at all. So don't let that put you off. If you haven't got any farming experience, we would categorise you and put you into groups which are sort of um, more suited to your to your uh, experience or lack of experience if that's if that's the better way of putting it so don't ever um, worry about you know or oh, I, I wouldn't want to come along and, and not have any experience and lots of other people having lots of experience might make me feel like I don't know what I'm doing because we would always ensure that we we put people into groups according to their background and experience so we would literally welcome people that have got no knowledge and people that have got a lot yeah, and I think it, last year there was a really good split, wasn't there, between people with experience and people with not. It's not like you're going to be the only one without. No, any... Absolutely. No, that's a really good point because um, we, we do see more and more students now coming through who have got very, very little or limited work experience. Uh, what we do try and do is encourage if, if it is an area that you want to come into and study and you're really keen on, about doing it, then we do try after your interview and encourage you to go and get some sort of experience, even if it's just a day or two on a farm. Um, we realise that that's not always possible because of transport restrictions. Farms are not usually in the middle of cities and they're quite difficult to get to. Um, but, you know, if, if you could just get one or two days of experience, it would certainly help your uh, embedding of your, of your learning. But, but no, it's not essential. I think the other thing that's really split is people who want to work on a farm practically when they graduate or those that want to go to university as well. Yeah. Uh, that leads me quite nicely on to um, somebody's asked, um, what's the difference between level two and level three? So I can answer this one if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> um, so level two um, and level three, a level two course is one year and the entry requirements for that are grade D slash three or above and you will need four GCSEs at that level and then the level three is um, you will need five GCSEs at grade C slash four or above including English, maths and science but if you don't get those if you're thinking of applying for this September and you haven't quite achieved your maths, English or science don't panic um, so apply and um, you can always retake your um, maths or English alongside your course or if necessary you could do the level two first. So the level two is a one year course with the idea that you'll progress on to either a level three uh, full time course with us or perhaps an apprenticeship with us as well at that level um, and um, the level three is, is two years and that will give you an extended diploma which will give you enough UCAS points to go on to university if you want to and like I was just saying there's a really big mix between those that do want to go to university and those that don't, so that's absolutely fine. Um, you know, some people go straight into work after. Um, whatever you want to do when you graduate, that's completely up to you. So, uh, James, I hope you can answer this one. Um, can I work part time as well? Yeah, um, a lot of our, especially our mature students, they will often hold down um, jobs at the same time, but equally our school leavers um, need to need some sort of income. So, yeah, absolutely you can. Um, obviously, we do say that you have to, as much as um, we try and do as much work in the college at working day as, as possible, uh, inevitably just like whilst you're at school there is an expectation to do some work and there's some commitment needed to do work outside of college time so as long as you don't completely overface yourself with with workload then absolutely yes it is something that you can work in and around the course yeah because although it is full time you won't be in college um from you know nine till five monday to friday there's some flexibility there as well um yeah that's brilliant thank you very much um, so 
if we talk about a lot about crops um, and then the livestock as well, if someone's got a preference over which one they want to have a career in, can they choose or is it a very general, a broad range across the modules? No, so what we've done at Brooksby um, is, is the, where the campus is situated and where, where the college itself is situated geographically, we're very, very much um, you know, we do a little bit of it all. So we've designed the course so that it does just that. You know, a level three um, student will be um, having a whole range of different uh, units as part of their course, including professional working relationships, estate skills, plant and soil science, managing agricultural environments. It's a really huge topic in the latest agricultural bill, and it's really something that we've got to ensure that we always battling the sustainable aspect of farming and agriculture so that will come as part of the managing agricultural environment and then there's a machinery unit and there's also a livestock unit so we're trying to embed all of those skills um, that would enable you to go out and get a job in any of the in, in any of the um, roles that, that agriculture offers so so no it's it's very much a a a bit of everything sort of an agricultural course which doesn't really favour any any of the industries in particular. Level three students progressing on to year two would also have a hand at doing a bit of the dairy. Uh, there's a dairy unit as well because we, we recognise that dairy is a huge um, industry within agriculture. But there's also opportunities in, in year two to broaden the sort of business development side of stuff as well and looking at diversification and how we can make sure that our business is sustainable and profitable. Great. Um, talking about dairy, we have actually had a question about do we do dairy so we don't have it on site do we or do we go no 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 so we we are currently in conjunction with a partner farm which is um an, a neighbor of ours and uh, yes it very much is a unit it will be a unit taught in the second year of level three um and again it's a it's a farm which has got an absolute outstanding um, amount of knowledge uh, with the industry and and rather than having it in-house we we can go on a number of various different trips uh, running a dairy is an extremely expensive thing um, and 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 they're also diverse in the way that they do it there's robotic milkers there's rotary milkers there's all sorts of different systems going on and what we can do is we can um, fortunately go around and see various different systems and, and make sure that the students are getting a, an experience in all of it. Great, thank you. Um, I can answer the next one, give you a little breather. Um, someone's asked when do the student welcome packs come out? Um, don't worry, they were sent out today, um, so you should receive yours maybe tomorrow, if not sort of the start of next week. Um, and you should have also received an invitation to enrolment as well um, that will have come as a letter maybe an email as well um, so if you haven't had that please um, let us know so we can get another one sent out to you um, if you are starting this september enrolment is taking place the week of the 23rd of august and then induction week is the week after um, and there is some information about your induction week in your student welcome pack as well so keep an eye out for that thank you um, do we know, James, what days of the week level three students are, are in? Is it on September? Unfortunately, we don't at the moment. No, it is something that will be announced at um, the enrolment event. Um, it's it is something that we we'd endeavour to get done by now, but unfortunately, um, timetabling constraints have meant that we haven't been able to finalise them just yet. Um, but it will be announced at, at the um, enrolment event. Um, so that's that, that's yeah, it's a good question, um, and and yeah, I know I understand that a lot of people have to sort of work around various different commitments. So it is something that we're working hard to get done. I think because our course, um, you know, you have to wait until we know how many people are going to be on the course, don't we, before we can set the timetable. So. It's very very difficult to know which one to do first. Yeah, <laughs> great. Um, someone's asked, what kit do you need? Do you need? Do you know this one? Yeah, I was hoping that this would come up because it's a really important one. Um, we are absolutely um, health and safety um, ready. You need to make sure that you have the various different items which will enable you to take part in all practicals. So 
every single student taking part in every single practical has to make sure that they have an overall so or a boiler suit some people know it as there is absolutely no preference to the make or, or, or style it just has to cover all so um, it's literally the, the all in one with a zip or poppers at the front um, and we have to make sure that you all got all have got those on um, safety boots uh, these can either be the short pull on boots they can be the lace ones or they could be wellington boots but they do have to have a steel toe cap we're working in and around some very large animals and with some very large equipment. So your safety is our priority. So we have to make sure you have that. And then again, we are kind of all weather uh, people. So if it is raining or if it is snowing or it's really, really windy, we will still go out and we will still do the practicals. So just a little bit of common sense with making sure that people have got, you know, waterproof coats and windproof coats that they're not going to stand there and freeze when we're doing a sheet practical in the middle of January. Um, so it's it's yeah, it's steel toe cap boots or wellies as, a, as an essential and um, overalls as an essential. The rest is, is, you know, make sure you keep dry and, and warm in the winter months. Okay, um, somebody's asked, are there any steel toe safety boots that you recommend? No, it's absolute personal preference. As long as they are, um, you know, as long as they are steel toe cap, then there's absolutely no preference. You know, uh, it, it, it is, you know, it, it, students do have preferred styles or, or ones that they find more comfortable than others. It is totally and utterly up to those which ones they get. Um, so yeah, there's, there's no, there's no list that we will say you have to buy them from here because we leave that up to you really. And although you can wear whatever overalls you like, a lot of people do have a preference over their brand as well. But <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that is it, that is an argument in itself about who's who whose brand of tractor is the best and yeah. whose overalls match that. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, thank you. Um a really good question's come in. Um I'll answer it. Maybe James might want to add to it as well. Um but whether you need to, if you don't have experience in farming, whether you need to start on level one or you can go straight on to level three. Um, in my opinion, you can go straight on to level three if you get the entry requirements. Um, if you start on level one, it is um, quite basic overview of um, our land based courses. So you'll have a bit of countryside management um, a bit of horticulture and a bit of agriculture in there. So that might be a good option if you're not quite sure which route you want to take. Yeah. But definitely, if you do have the qualifications to do the level three, um, you know, you'd be perfectly fine going on to that. Um, if you're not quite sure, um, the best thing to do would be to either drop us an email now or to, if you're applying for this September, get an application in um, for the level three. And then you'll have quite an informal phone interview um, with one of the tutors to just discuss um, the course and you can ask any questions that you might have. Um, if you're feeling really nervous about going on to it, but you do have the grades for a level three, the level two might be the better option. It's completely up to you, really, if you do have those grades. Um, but no, there's no requirement to do the, the level one before you do the, the level two or the level three. Um, I think I'm right there, aren't I, James? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's understandable as well if somebody feels like they would be out of their depth um, doing a level three, even if they have their entry requirements. And we have in the past had students specifically request that they do a year of level two before going on to level three. And that's absolutely fine. Um, Alex just says a really, really good point in the fact that we wouldn't want somebody who is academically ready to feel like they were um, not necessarily wasting their year, but but but, but get part way through that year and feel frustrated that they weren't moving ahead as fast as they could do. So it is horses for courses, and it's entirely up to the individual on which one they do. Um, but we 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 would never ever want somebody to feel like they couldn't do it because they have a lack of experience. Because the the whole ethos at Brooksby um, and SMB is that we you know we will cater for each and every student as an individual and make sure that they feel comfortable in everything that they're doing. Brilliant. Um, you might answer this one a little bit better than me, but what's the difference between level three one year and level two? 
Okay, so level three one year um, is essentially the same as you stopping on and doing your A-levels, but only doing one year of your two-year A-levels. Um, absolutely, it is an option. You can do it, but you need to let us know when you sign up to the course. Um, and also the, the level two will enable you to be able to go on and progress to university if that's what you want to do, or if we want to go on to do a level four, or something like that. Um, but there are a number of options. You know, we, we haven't really mentioned um, in this session much about our apprenticeship. And we do have some that would decide if they do a, a year, a first year of their level three and then progress on to a level three apprenticeship. It is slightly different because the way in which a, a full time course is, is their levels and the levels for an apprenticeship, they are slightly different. Um, a level three apprenticeship, for an example, needs to have some sort of superior su supervisory role where you oversee some other people at work. Um, but the apprenticeships is another great route and, and it is one that's becoming more and more popular within agriculture. Um, finding an employer can sometimes be the, the stumbling block, but at the end of the day, there are a lot of jobs out there in the agricultural industry. It's a lot to do with whereabouts you're located, where you live, and whether or not you can find an employer which is, you know, within your uh, locality to get to and from from work. But the apprenticeships is a great option for somebody who really, really doesn't like sitting in the classroom day in day out and feels that they really have had, you know, um, that experience at school and they really feel that they need to just Get out there into industry and, and start to earn a little bit of money as well you know it's not it's not a huge great amount of money that you can earn whilst you're doing an apprenticeship but at the end of the day you are earning whilst you're learning so it just it's just a slightly different way of getting your qualification at the end of the day but the the apprenticeship team here at brooksby are really really dedicated and really really um hands on at coming out and visiting you and in checking your employer and yourself are working together and you're and you're getting on a, a great relationship building which is enabling you to get that qualification so yeah it, it is another option that's worth thinking about thank you we've got loads of questions coming in and only a few minutes left so okay, I'll, <laughs> um, I'll do quick fire yeah okay um would you say that students no no i've already done that one what tractors do you have so at the college, we're very fortunate to have a fleet of seven John Deere tractors. Um, so yeah, OK, some people might not like those, but they are almost brand new and we're really, really lucky the students will have a go on them at some point during their machinery or their crop unit. Thank you. Um, I have no arable experience, but loads of livestock experience. Should I get some experience in this area before enrolling? It would help, but if you can't, don't worry about it. We will make sure that you get the experience whilst you're here at college. So the more experience you can get on or across all of the different areas, that's great. But don't panic if you can't, because we'll give it to you when you're here. Yeah, you'll, you'll get plenty of livestock experience when you're here. Yeah. yeah. Um, how many days are in the classroom versus outdoors? Does it change each week or is it set? We try and set it, but obviously we realise that certain things come along, which mean that we have to change it. So, for example, we, we there are some weather conditions where we just cannot go outside because if, for example, it's drilling a crop and it's it's been raining for a week, then we have to just change the timetable. But very, very rule of thumb, um, level twos, we try and do it about 50-50 indoors and outdoors. Level three, year one, you're looking at around sort of 65, 70% of the time spent inside. And when you progress on to level three, year two, you're looking at spending more of around 70% of your time indoors. So as you go up the, the levels, there is slightly less time spent on the farm because there is more, um, there's, there's more theoretical stuff that we need to get across to you. Great, thank you. And then um, one last one, how many students tend to be in each course and what is the age range like? So again, age range and sex is, is very, very diverse. We have a lot of school leavers, but we also have very mature students and we have a nice mixture of uh, males and females. Um, and really it's, it's, it's a great way to um, learn off each other. You know, peer learning is something that we all do and, and, and having that range of ages uh, really helps in the experience that they come with. Uh, but also it's, um, I, I forgot the first part of the question. How many? Um, how many? Oh yeah. yeah. So it is growing in numbers year on year, and there seems to be more and more. Uh, it's 
becoming a more and more popular course, which is fantastic. We're, we're looking at having in level three this year, anything up to about 60, but don't panic, you won't all be together. We are splitting them into two groups. And more importantly, for your practicals, we're splitting them down again to make sure that the experience that you get on practicals um, is, is really, really valuable and you're not going to be standing around. So the most we'd be looking at on a practical session would be 12. And the most that you'd be looking at for a theory session, you'd be looking at about the late 20s, 30, a little bit like when you were at school. Brilliant, thank you. Um, that's all we've got time for. If, um, oh, someone's just asked, are there many girls? Well, I will just answer that one because um, it's about 50-50 split, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. 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 <laughs> and do we get to take part in lambing? Yes, you will be sick of taking part in lambing by the time spring is, is here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the, I'd just end it just by saying, you know, uh, agriculture is a great industry. Give it a go. Experience or no experience, we will cater for your needs. And, you know, any questions, then send them into the marketing team and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Yeah, we, yeah, messages on Facebook, send us an email, anything like that, and we can pass them on to James or the tutors. That's, that's no problem at all. We right. do have an Instagram page, Agriculture Does. It's uh, BMC yeah. Agriculture, and it's a great way, again, to just follow what's going on on the farm, what the curriculum teams are up to. So search it on Instagram, and you can see, hopefully, two or three times a week, we pop something up there of what's going on. So it's a great way to keep up to date with what's happening. Lovely. Thanks, James. All right, thank you, All everyone. Right. Have a good evening. Thank you. Bye.